wonder. The dictionary defines wonder as a feeling of surprise mingled with admiration, caused by something beautiful, unexpected, unfamiliar, or inexplicable. When was the last time you felt genuine awe, wonder, or amazement? In Psalm 40 verse 5, King David says, Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. As his children, are we awake to the wonders of creation that God has planted in the world around us? The fingerprints of the Creator God are everywhere for us to see. But when was the last time we marveled at a rainbow in the sky, stopped to admire a wildflower by the roadside, or thanked Him for the cool sea breeze? Are we awake to the wonders of His amazing grace, which we have received so undeservedly? Are we awake to the riches in His Word, or have we exchanged wonder for apathy and numbness to the familiar as we grow older? Six years back, just a routine health screening, um, there's a diagnosis of nose cancer in me. It was because my dad had the same thing, so I, I would always ask for a tumour marker test. I've, I've done it for many years, it's always okay, you know, um, but for that particular year, something showed up. But even when it showed up as positive, a lot of people told me, don't worry about it, it's okay, you know, it's normal. Even, even when I went to the specialist, he told me, no, it's okay, I have the same marker too, no, no, don't worry about it. So I was really at ease, but um, God really sent me to the right specialist because when he heard of my history, he says, okay, fine, even though nobody will actually, you know, it's, it's not a big concern, but since you have got family history, let's just do a test about it. And that's where he, he actually uh, put a tube in and then, and then just, just did a scan and then, 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 then he actually spotted it. And, um, and I did the biopsy on the spot and everything came very, very fast. It was difficult time, it was painful, it was really, really painful. And it was also then that I realised that because of the radiation that I was going through, my salivary glands was affected, my throat was just completely, I don't know how you describe, but it's, it's just very raw and wounded, it's painful, it's painful to the point that I couldn't even swallow my own saliva. But that was the very moment that I want to praise the Lord even more. I want to sing even more, even louder in whatever I have. But that is the time when nothing could come out. I couldn't even complete a chorus without drinking a sip, you know, take a sip of water. But that sip hurts so much as it goes down the throat. And that was a revelation moment, a moment that I hold through, a defining moment for me that, you know, when I had it all so easy, I didn't sing for you. But when everything was dropped away from me, I wanted so much to sing for you, but I can't. I, I couldn't get any word out, I couldn't get any voice, any noise out of me. And, and, and that was also a, the turning moment for me there. Yeah, God, I want to do while I can. I don't want to wait for another moment like this. So whatever I have, let me just do it for you. We backslided for many, many, many years. We just came back to the Lord. It's the first time in our life that we actually join a cell. And I saw the power of cell at that point in time when it's our lowest. I don't know how would I would have gone through without my cell members then because they were encouraging me, you know, they were texting me every day when I was going through the treatment. After the treatment itself, um, I felt the strong nudge from the Lord that it's time for me to refocus on my family. You know, he, he reminded during this that period of, of um, journey and difficult time and I'm asking myself, why do I return home? Why do I come home only when I'm sick and tired? You know, I gave my best to my work, I gave my best to the corporate world and I came home only as a burden to my family. 
and and that actually affected me a lot but even then when god gave me this this strong nudge to say it's time to focus on your family i'm really really reluctant i i bargain i argue a lot and i told god that two more years just give me two more years you know i haven't saved enough i, I it's it's not enough i've got three children i need to save for their education i i i don't have enough yet the verse came in Numbers, you know, eleven twenty-three. That that the Lord say, is the Lord's arm too short for you? I think that was a big slap, and and I think that is where I really relented. Yeah, and with a lot of reservation, I tendered my resignation. For whatever reason, God allowed that to happen. The devil came. The devil robbed of my health. Okay, upset a lot of my life, but. The Lord will never let us go through something in vain. You know, God just turned around situation like this. It was a pit stop for me because I have no brake pad in my life. I just keep going on and on and on. But He made me stop, and for the four and a half years, He really restored me. He nursed me back, you know, physically and spiritually. And um, and most important of all, He also taught me, you know, what is stewardship. Over finance, over relationships, and over the three talents that he has given me—that is my three children—and also one very, very important truth that I have learned is that God made me really, really realize that be content with where you are and where I put you to be. Just like in Jeremiah, he said, "I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you." And he was really asking me, "Do you believe?" And I truly believe. I really, truly believe now. And I just want to be where God wants me to be at any point in time. What stands in the way of wonder? Familiarity, stress, hurry, or workaholism? Whatever it is, we need to seek a recovery of wonder, so that familiarity or worldly cares may not obscure the beautiful treasures. Timeless truths and life-transforming power in God's word. After all, wonder inspires worship.